Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're going to be taking a look at the Silverstone TJ08E uh, which is the latest case to come out of the uh, Silverstone range um, and it's a dedicated MATX case uh, basically, I'm gonna, I might as well tell you from the start because I always seem to forget, it comes in at around 80 quid, 79.99 I'm seeing it for there and about Nice noisy neighbours. Um, but what I'm going to do is I've already done all my testing and everything on this and I've now got uh, set up for the video with a few bits so I can obviously show you around the case but then show you uh, a few bits that I've uh, kind of found with it. Yes, that's my phone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the camera in and uh, give you a good look round. So, as I always say, without further ado, let's get the camera in and uh, get on with it. Right then my lovelies, one thing I'm going to say is I've already taken the screws out of the doors. I've also taken the screws out of the roof and I will explain why in a little bit because like I said I've already done all my testing on this um, and uh, yeah basically uh, I've taken stuff out to save time when we do the video. Anyway, yes I have had a lot of coffee uh, and I'm feeling very much like Boxy. <laughs> anyway, right uh, at the front, a couple of optical bays at the top. One thing I will say about the front as well is that this front section is uh, quite a thick uh, aluminium, aluminium, however you want to pronounce it, but the rest of the case is steel. Uh, it does give the front uh, quite a quality feel, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it's nicely machined, it just makes it feel a bit nicer. It's much, um, a bit like the Cooler Master 840 kind of feel, and many of the other Silverstones that they brought out recently have had alley front. Anyway, you can see this massive mess area in the front. Uh, that's basically because there is a 118mm uh, air penetrator Silverstone fan in there as an intake. Uh, and obviously the air penetrators are brilliant. Um, but yeah, massive intake for such a small case. And there is uh, an, optical, an optical bay. There is a 3.5 inch bay at the bottom should you need to use it. Case is USB 3 only, but you do get an adapter bracket um, because the cable inside is uh, the, uh, an onboard USB 3. But they do send you an adapter that goes from onboard USB 3 into normal onboard USB 2, so that's quite handy. Uh, the front is also dust filtered, but quite cleverly, depending on where you have your case situated, you can take the dust filter out both sides. Um, we've obviously got power and reset buttons, uh, activity light for the hard drive and a power light and then your headphone and microphone slots. Um, right, now this is where it really starts to get a little bit difficult because basically like I said I've taken the um, screws out of the roof already but by uh, taking the door off as you can see it's kind of an inverted design as in you have to take like the almost the wrong side of the door off um, to be able to get to the case. Now I've got uh, an NHD14 fitted here on an MATX motherboard. Now it is just normal MATX. I'll show you at the back. There's a 120mm fan here. You've got the normal four MATX slots. There's uh, some vents up here and that's so the, um, the air penetrator can blow up the back of the motherboard and there is vents, I'll show you those quickly. I'll take the other door off. I'll show you around the back. So like I said, I have taken screws out, so ignore the roof moving. The air penetrator can blow up the back of the motherboard. There is um, vents here, so it can literally go up the back of the motherboard, come out here and then uh, exit out the back of the case. I'll zoom you in so you can have a little bit of a look. So there you go, you can come up the back of the motherboard and up here and then it can still escape out the back. So it's just, they must have had airflow problems up here so they've added this in so it can pass through. Uh, right, what I want to show you is basically the um, motherboard tray is removable uh, and all you have to do, sorry, let me dive it around this side, all you have to do is there's normally a screw here and a screw down at the bottom that you put through the... Oh, hang on. Rookie error. Right, we'll start again. There's uh, normally a screw here and a screw down at the bottom. 
and uh, that's because the motherboard tray is removable and basically it is removable but it's not this simplest design to get in and out you do have to kind of do a lot of kind of moving around um, and getting it to actually latch in again uh, pretty difficult and well not difficult it's just not easy uh, it's always best to have the case stood up when you do it anyway um, but you can get it and obviously whizzing the motherboard out like that is um, a lot easier than having to take the whole rig apart so for a smaller case to have a removable motherboard tray like this it's quite cool um, so yeah we've got that there's only a, sort of like two or three cable well four actually five six I should really have counted first We've got a few cable routing um, clips around and about and uh, some cutouts but no grommets. Um, there is a fair bit of room behind the motherboard tray but something else I want to zoom you in and show you is if you have a look here you can see here that the, there's the um, uh, like the, the, where the motherboard stand comes round, it actually pretty much blocks off any cables going further round. So you'd have to use the um, uh, the cutout here. You wouldn't be able to, you know, slide the cables right the way around. So over that, we have to go up and over the top. So that's just something to uh, bring to your attention there. So if I say it again, you can't get the uh, cables to go this way because of this uh, flap here. You either have to go over the top or put your cables out through either of the cutouts. Um, so that was something. Now, power supply, I'm going to spin this round. Power supply was something that I was perplexed by because I spent quite a while trying to get the power supply up in this way, but it's so finely cut that you have to put the power supply in through the top. Um, now, I thought you'd be able to get it in from underneath and be able to jiggle it in some way, but I literally couldn't get it in there. So what you have to do is there's two screws here and here, and they're both sides, and there's two screws at the back. And you have to take the roof off to be able to drop the power supply in. So it's, if I put it up a little bit, there we go. So yeah, you have to take the two screws off here and here, uh, and two screws off at the back, and the same screws on the opposite side, and then you can lift the roof off. Uh, so you can put the power supply in. Uh, it is much, much easier to drop it in the top, um, but I know a lot of people out there are like, oh, I've literally got to take the case apart to be able to fit it. Um, now we'll talk about my thoughts on that a little bit more in the conclusion. Um, but with the power supply uh, as well, it's got a dust filter in the roof. Now I'm not normally, uh, I have ripped cases off about having magnetic tops for the cases. Uh, I think this is a little bit different because it's a proper stamped grill and there is a recess, as you can see, for the um, dust filter, which you can just slide on. But one of the things I did think about with the dust filter is the dust filter's got screw holes, but there's no screw holes in there. So it looks a little bit out of place, um, but at least there's a filter there. It doesn't really move around too much. Um, and the, uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, because the, there was a magnetic top on the uh, H2 and I hated it because it was just covering up dodgy mesh and then a circular stamped hole. This at least redeems itself by having a proper recess for the magnetic plate. Um, and then also uh, it's got a proper stamped grill rather than just a wanky bit of mesh stuck over the top. One thing I will say while we've got it here is the case is uh, steel and as far as I'm aware it looks powder coated. I've been trying to find um, uh, marks for paint but the way everything's, um, uh, like all the edges are done, it does appear to be powder coated. And I will say, because I do powder coat myself, this is a very, very good quality satin powder coat on this. Um, but yeah. Anyway, you drop the power supply in the roof, then you can just slide the roof back on, stick your screws in, and then that's it, job done. But I did find while I was doing this, I use a solid state drive <coughs> a lot. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, if you're going to end up with a big, power, big heat sink like this, I think most people will be on SSDs anyway. But if you do use a big heat sink like this, and I'll zoom you in again, 
If you have a look, it's very, very close to the hard drive cage. Hard drive cage that you can uh, fit three hard drives in. There's room for an SSD in the bottom, by the way. Um, but yeah, this hard drive cage uh, is very, very close to the heat sink, as you, can, as you can see. So if you've got a massive heat sink, you're going to find it difficult to mount your hard drives. Now this cage is removable, which is a good thing. Um, if I zoom me back out again, because I've proved my point, uh, this hard drive cage is removable, so that's not too much of a bad thing. Um, so if you're just going to use a solid state drive, then wicked. Uh, I don't think the cage is able to be spun around. It doesn't appear to be. I have had a gander, and I can't wait. Do you know what I mean? I wouldn't be able to spin it around, but then it would block the air penetrator up. If this was my case, what I would suggest, I mean. Generally, if you've got a solid state drive and you're going to need uh, a storage drive as well, or you know, if you want a storage drive, the way I would do it would be to have a solid state drive, and then I'm actually a really big fan of the Western Digital 2 terabyte green drives because they've only got 5,400 um, spin speed, which means they're cool and quiet, um, but you don't really need them to be astronomically fast for storage anyway. And then I would probably just mount one. If you've got an optical drive in one bay, you can get a uh, five and a quarter inch adapters. I would probably mount one of the um, WDs in the top as a storage drive out of the way and remove this hard drive bay altogether. Um, one thing about this hard drive bay which is good though is it pretty much is going to direct an awful amount of airflow straight from the air penetrator straight at that if you had an NHD14 or a Silver Arrow or one of those new Fantech coolers um, it would pretty much direct it straight at the um, the heatsink which is a fairly good thing now there is a plastic plate on top of this um, uh, on top of the hard drive bay and they send you a rubber pad as well and that's so if you've got your graphics card in here and you can fit pretty much any graphics card you like in because it's all of this top section to open um, this rubber pad is so it will actually support the graphics card if it's in the first slot, which let's face it with an MATX board they probably are going to be going in at least the first slot and whether it's second or third it takes up. Um, but yeah, so they've actually put a graphics card support pad in there for you as well and obviously the rubber um, mat stops you from like getting shorts and stuff like that. Now I also uh, whipped the uh, back fan out, I tested with a Noctua in there uh, but it doesn't come with a rear exhaust fan. The only fan that you get in the case is the front 180mm. Um, also, the front 180mm fan has a little switch here, and it's a low and high, as we're getting to almost be, you know, like standard issue with Silverstone cases, that they have a small um, fan speed control switch. Um, now, the thing is... The reason why I use the big cooler is a lot of people would be saying, oh, you don't need it with MATX cases, but there are a lot of high power um, MATX boards out there now, P67, Z68. Um, the AMD stuff doesn't really matter because it doesn't really get hot, but you can get a 2600K in one of these, and for items that you could be running a 580 or a 590 in this rig, big heat sink, big overclock, um, and although it will be pretty packed in, you'd have to be, you know, quite clever with your um, cable management and stuff like that. This case really isn't that big and you can have an awful, no different to the same sort of rig that someone's using using a much bigger case. So what I'm trying to say is, is you could make yourself a powerhouse with this rig and it not be that big. Um, I've just got an MSI M80X in there at the moment. Um, but when I had this all running, I mean the, the heatsink because I'm uh, running an i3 on this, it's the only MATX board I've got kicking about. And especially with the NHD14, it's ridiculous overkill, but it was so cool and quiet, it was just unbelievable. The actual thermal performance of this case is brilliant, because big fan in the front, blowing straight over a massive heatsink, and a Noctua fan at the back, Bosch um, uh, PSU, I did this for once, have it intaking from the roof, but you, it wouldn't really have mattered. Um, and yeah, I had it running with a mechanical drive which I had mounted up in the, um, in the hard drive base here because on this test rig I don't really use uh, SSDs. But anyway, um, yeah, it was all spanking lovely and like I said you can whip the um, motherboard tray in and out. It was, jobs are good and really, it was, um, yeah, it's been really, really easy to work with. 
Uh, something else I wanted to say, and I'm going to take the um, motherboard tray out to show you, if I can get it out. Let me just stand up and do this because it's caught on cables. Right. In the bottom of the case, now I'm going to have to zoom you in again, in the bottom of the case. If you see that there, this is a large heat sink support bracket. Whereas you can slide this little rail up, and I've not broken it, I've actually just pulled a clip off, but that little clip moves, and then these bits slide up. So if you think about it, you could have that supporting your chuffing great big uh, heat sink perfectly, and it would give it a nice bit of support so that if you were moving this for a LAN, it wouldn't be putting extra stress on your motherboard as you were putting it up and down all the time, like if you were moving it. That would really, to be perfectly honest, if you had this static on your desk, I wouldn't really say this was necessary. Good bit of fail safe, but if you were planning on using it as a LAN rig, uh, which is the way I see this as being designed for, that would be um, brilliant. And uh, just to show you for the first time, there is your motherboard tray. So it really is that easy to get it out and you know that easy to be able to move around and work on your rig. Technically you could take it out with your graphics card and everything, well not this, no you wouldn't be able to take it out with your graphics card because it connects at the back so I do apologise but you could then fit your graphics card on this to test it outside the rig if you wanted to. It's a nice little small footprint, do you know what I mean, something that you can easily pick up. Um, I'm actually quite impressed with this, like I said we're at such a small case and it's not stupendously expensive for it to still have that I thought was uh, really good but anyways rabbling with my coffee self what I'm going to do now is uh, break onto the conclusion and then uh, yeah we can uh, decide what I think right then guys so what did I think of the uh, TJ08 um, uh, now, I've not really done, I've done a lot of Silverstones lately, but I've not ever really done a massive amount of MATX cases in the past, but this one I really like. Um, now, uh, the, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the award and then I'm going to explain why afterwards. Um, and to be perfectly honest with you, I'm going to go with a gold award. Uh, and I've been dishing these out a lot lately, but... I think they've been quite well deserved. Now, this, why am I going to give it a gold award? In my head, my the way I see this being used is either um, at home for a small footprint system, uh, that, do you know what I mean? You can still have it as an all singing, all dancing if you want, but I think this really comes into its own when you start thinking about like a land rig. Um, now, the price is only $79.99 and the build quality with the Silverstone stuff is brilliant. Um, to be perfectly honest with you, there's uh, other MATX cases on the market. I re uh, reviewed one recently, it was over £100, uh, and there was no uh, real major difference other than the other brand was made from aluminium, and this one was a steel, but this still isn't a heavy case or anything like that. The finish on it is perfect, it's very well built, and it's very well designed as well. The only real drawback about this case is the uh, if you're going to be using uh, mechanical hard drives uh, with that large heatsink, uh, or with a large heatsink. If you're not, then you're not going to have a problem. Um, like I said, you, if you're only going to have one mechanical as like a storage drive and then using solid state drives, then you can obviously put the mechanical up in one of the optical bays. Um, if you're going to be using a lot of uh, if you're going to be using a lot of mechanical drives, then you're just going to have to go careful with your heatsink choices uh, in that you know, you're not going to be able to use a monster. Um, but, uh, motherboard tray is removable. Uh, it is a bit of a pain that you have to take the roof off to really be able to get the power supply in. But it's just a few screws, they're easy to take out, they're easy to put in, easy peasy. It's really not that big a deal. If you've got to go to the point of having to screw your motherboard in place, to be able to, you know what I mean, uh, just whisk a few screws out and put power supply in, it's really not a problem. And also, where you can get from above, it's going to help you get all your cables tidier and everything like that. So it's not too much of a problem, I don't think. Uh, now, with the, um, uh, the hard drive bay, like I said, if I was going to 
be using this. I'd probably leave that in there because it pretty much does just channel air at the uh, heat sink anyway, or at least the D14 it did. Um, I'd probably leave that in there. Um, but yeah, and that massive air penetrator at the front for such a small case is just brilliant, to be perfectly honest with you. Even when you turn it down, it's lovely and quiet. There's still so much air going down. Uh, and whereas, because uh, I've watched videos on this, whereas a lot of cases throw, a lot of cases, a lot of fans throw their air force out like that, it goes off at like 45 degree angles, the air penetrators pretty much channel it straight forward. Um, so it, the difference it makes with the, the airflow in the case is um, just, it, yeah, it makes a massive difference. Well, not a massive difference, but do you know what I mean? It performs really, really well, and it makes sure that the air gets to all the right bits. And where the fan does actually stick up above that hard drive bay, uh, it's going to be channeling air towards your graphics card and stuff anyway. It's just where it is such a small little compartment with a massive fan, it's brilliant. Obviously, the fan in the front is dust filtered as well, so that's good. You've got the uh, uh, another reason why I would leave that hard drive bay in there is because of the support for your graphics card. If you've got a big graphics card in there, it can sit on there. Um, but this is where, uh, if you're going to be using it for a LAN, it's good because, like I said, if you keep putting your rig up and down, then your graphics card's not going to be able to kind of keep bashing down because it's going to be resting on that support, or at least it's only going to be able to go down that far. Um, but then you've also got the CPU heat sink um, support at the bottom as well, so it's not going to be damaging your board should you be moving it about a lot. So I really, really like that. It's all those kind of little touches are the reason why, including the fact that it's only 80 quid and it's, I think, there's a little bit of a billy bargain, is why I decided to give it a gold award. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm really, really impressed with it to the point where I can see uh, a lot of, um, or at least I can see a lot of options of being able to build really big, powerful rigs in such a small little platform. It's not necessarily going to be uh, something you can really mod very much, but for a simple, you know, get the right parts, build yourself an awesome rig. It'll be brilliant. Um, so yeah, full of coffee. I hope I've explained that. It's just because uh, I was mega tired, so I've had like two cups of coffee before I um, wanted to start doing this video because I just looked so tired earlier. But anyway, Silverstone TJ08E uh, OC3D Gold Award winner definitely gets a TGL thumbs up as well. I'm really, really, I did really, really like this. Um, but yeah, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you.